Talking Points Memo is reporting today that Elizabeth Warren is drawing a line in the sand, and she's had enough with the corporatization of American politics. So we discussed a few weeks ago an investment banker named Antonio Weiss, uh, who was chosen to be the undersecretary of the Treasury Department. But we learned that in his previous jobs, he helped Burger King and Tim Hortons and other companies evade taxes in very sleazy ways. So it's clear that his loyalty lies with private companies. He's a sellout. He doesn't care about the American people. He doesn't care about doing a great job as uh, being part of the Treasury. He cares about helping out his buddies. So now, Elizabeth Warren is attempting to block him from the position, which is delicious. She has a bunch of liberal groups who are backing her as well. Those include Democracy for America and the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. But the fascinating aspect of this story is that if it wasn't for Elizabeth Warren bringing this issue up, and we did a segment on it when she first wrote her article exposing this guy, Antonio Weiss, if it wasn't for her, none of these groups would even know about the Undersecretary of the Treasury. I don't, I didn't know about the Undersecretary of the Treasury. I knew nothing about it. But Elizabeth Warren did. Our media sucks and they don't cover it in any serious way. They probably don't know what the Undersecretary of the Treasury is. And she's trying to prevent, in a very brave way, this complete and utter sellout from screwing over the American people and getting this important position. Now, it turns out that, remember, it is an important position because they're in charge of a lot of things that involve uh, taxes and a lot of different aspects of our financial system. And remember, this guy's totally sold out to corporate America. Get this, another thing we learned today. His investment bank that he used to work for, they say they'll pay him $20 million if he gets the job. Well, why would they pay him? What are they expecting back in return? Now, see, this is the point, man. This is why Elizabeth Warren's hair is on fire. And she's like, I can't believe what I walked into when she got involved in government. She's like, Jesus Christ, the whole fucking thing is just a giant corrupt circle jerk. What's happening here? We need to change this. We need to act on it. And so now she's exposing all these different things. She's got the liberal groups lined up behind her to help in the fight. And the more I read about stuff like this, the more I think, man, she has to run for president and she has to win. Because in terms of, I understand that most change is going to come from bottom up. It comes from us. We need to put pressure on the people in power. We need to march. We need to get in their faces, all this stuff. But there also can be change with good leadership. So there can be top-down change. It's just that the system is so incredibly corrupt that 98, 99% of people who get into the system, even if they mean well, they end up acting somewhat corrupt. And there's different degrees, of course, of how corrupt you are. Your you know, run-of-the-mill Democrat is obviously less corrupt than your run-of-the-mill Republican, but they're still corrupt. person in the Progressive Caucus is less corrupt than both of them by far, but still there's probably a little bit of corruption going on there. But every once in a while, you see a Bernie Sanders, you see an Elizabeth Warren, where if there is corruption in what they're doing, it's hard to spot, or I can't find it, or it might not even be there at all. So there we have it, man. Elizabeth Warren standing up, fighting, progressive groups behind her, fighting. This is an alliance that can continue, maybe into 2016, maybe into the White House, in which case, there'd be a big smile on my face, because we'd actually have FDR Part 2. <laughs>